This portion of the CU podcast is brought to you by Dr. Squatch. Dr. Squatch is changing personal care with high performance natural products that smell amazing and will have you feeling and looking your best. Dr. Squatch products are made using only the finest ingredients Mother Nature has to offer. They're transparent about their ingredients and their production. In fact, all of their products are at least 98% natural in origin. They never use any harsh chemicals or harmful ingredients, and all of their scents are naturally derived. You may not expect it from a scruffy fellow like me, but I love shower products, and these are amazing. Dr. Squatch soaps set themselves apart with fresh and energizing smells. Uh, some of them include like bay rum, pine tar, alpine sage. This is, this smells so nice. I took a shower with this eating last night. It was the best I've smelled in forever. I wanted to go into a forest and just commune with the woodchucks and the deer. I used the pine tar last night and it was tough to get me out of the shower. Some of their soaps have added grit to help you feel even cleaner by providing an energizing exfoliating experience. For instance, the pine tar I used really had some grit in there and you, mm -hmm. could, you know, really feel clean after using it. Um, we received soap, we got some shampoo that was fantastic to use. Look at this got hair. Hair feeling clean. Got the conditioner going on in here, it was great. Deodorant, the soaps, everything has been fantastic. The soap lathers up really nice, rich and creamy. Dr. Squatch uses all natural ingredients you can actually pronounce. I mean, if you look at the back of the box here, it's got olive oil, sustainable palm, coconut, some shea butter, and then some fragrances. That's really about it. There's nothing strange here. And no harsh chemicals means it's great for someone like me with sensitive skin. I actually have a real tough time using a lot of other soaps. Uh, I got out of the shower yesterday after using the Dr. Squatch. My skin wasn't red. I had no irritation or itchiness. Dr. Squatch is sustainably sourced, so you can feel good about making it part of your showering routine. Ah, if you want to smell like a champion, click the link below and use our code DSQCUPOD to get 20% off any order over $20. You're welcome. Get yourself some Dr. Squatch and get yourself clean. Ian, GameStop is in the news. Good old GameStop. Oh, boy. The meme stock darling of 2021. <sighs> Um, is, is back in the news. I just want to say uh, that GameStop uh, is always extremely late to the party. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, they should have got on board, uh, you know, a digital game marketplace, I don't know, at least uh, 12, 13 years ago, 14 years ago, they could have probably still been, you know, active, uh, you know, there. But now we thought erroneously that the Chewy guy that took over the company was uh, with N and touting NFT technology. We stupidly thought that a game company would want to do an NFT marketplace and tie NFTs to to the blockchain for digital game sales, for buying and selling. Right. We're like, that's what it has to be, right? GameStop is buying and selling a game. But you still a, don't need uh, NFTs for, but at least it would have made some... I, I, it's with the brand. It would have made sense. It's in, in the brand, some way. Man. We thought that's what makes sense. Oh no no no! No hell no! no. We're we're too we're too stupid. No, they just want to they just want to be another open sea. They we, just want to be another exchange. Ian and I think like poor people. We want to stay poor, as the crypto and NFT bros say. Stay poor. Stay poor. Uh, GameStop is just opening an NFT marketplace. They're 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 investing over a hundred million dollars into this. Hundreds of millions of dollars. They they want an NFT marketplace, and it's coming by the end of July. Uh, it's launching its own self-custodial Ethereum digital wallet. I'm starting to sh get shrinkage just from saying that. Uh, I mean, it's hilarious. How, how can you not laugh when, I mean, we had the articles a month ago coming out and talking about how there's a 95% drop off. And, 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 and here's GameStop yeah. with their fucking dick hanging out, showing up, being like, yeah. hey, it's time to, time to put out these yeah. NFT wallets. Crypto crashed, NFT uh, crashed probably harder than that. Um, and now... You have this basically all the money or a chunk of the money from the from the meme stock increase. Take that cash out to do something out of all the things you could have done. Reinvest in your stores. Uh, try to do a digital game storefront in some aspect. You know that it's too late for that. At least yeah. it would make sense. We're going to take all that money and shit it away on something that's derided by the vast majority of people who think it's stupid and pointless. And it's mostly for grifting and scamming. And. Uh, the, and even in the pop culture, it's already it's already gone. Like there's, there's nothing left with it. You, it. It's already it's it, it's had its day in the sun, and that was uh, for the most part last year. Yeah, it's done. Right, it's fucking done. There's zero I, reason for fucking GameStop so, to be doing this right now, except for the fact that they they were probably slow. And like I said, the seeds of this idea. I mean, it did because we've been talking, we've been bringing this up for a while. The seeds of the idea 
came right before the peak and they have just taken way too long. They're not going to, they're not going to catch any of that wave. Sure. Um, so, so the, the issue now though, is that they, in order to make this a success, Ian, they are going to have to do, spend a lot of advertising marketing dollars to not just capture the dwindling of, you know, cons NFT, whatever you want to call them, consumer base, they're going to have to now advertise this shit to the current GameStop customers. So this is going to this is going to go down a path uh, where you're going to see. You, you think people don't like this idea now, Ian? Imagine now when you walk into a GameStop, they're going to be throwing this shit at you and just saying, "Oh, by the way, we got a new NFT for a game coming out. The game's coming out. Well, Ian, now you can buy the NFT. Here's they're going to they're going to try to probably work out similar deals how they did." With with remember when you had like oh the exclusive DLC at GameStop, yeah. Imagine now the exclusive NFT deals are going to try to oh, get absolutely. And 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 uh, GameStop has gotten pretty desperate, and I don't hold it against the people who work there. It's not they choose, but you know how GameStop used to always try to get you with the do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want this? There were a few years there where they were kind of hands off about it. Mm -hmm. I went in there the other day to buy a copy of Switch Sports. And I must have been asked if I like it felt like 30 fucking questions. Do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? Do you well, do you need this, this guarantee? Yeah. Do you want to pre-order this? Do you want to get on the card? And like I said, really, no, no shade or hatred to the people just doing their job. But the GameStop higher ups have uh, lately. They've really started telling people to force that shit down their throat. It's going to be insufferable with NFTs. You think they're not going to do that with NFTs? They absolutely are. Especially since they're investing, like I said, I think, oh yeah, a hundred million dollars at least. It was, it was yeah, they're, they're doing it. They're, oh, it's a hundred million dollar fund to award grants to artists who make NFTs for GameStop's marketplace. They're doing that, but also all the money investing into this tech and getting this going. And then, like I said, advertising and marketing this shit. This is going to be an absolute, not just a nightmare because the fact that no one really wants it. They're going to be forced to spend good money after bad. Yes, uh, on this in order to say to prop this up and to say, well, this was the this is the main direction our company was going over the past whenever I think a year ago we first heard about it, like like last summer they sort of like dropped it, that this was going to happen. Yeah, when NFTs were like the new hotness still, and now that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. they, they they started talking about this a long time ago. Yeah, I think it was like July of last year, August. Of the, they dragged the their feet way too long. Um, so this is more details about this. So this self custodial wallet. This is from the CNN article. Good old CNN, still kicking. Uh, only gives the user access to the private digital key needed to access the wallet. The key is not stored anywhere else, which means that users don't have to rely on an intermediary like Robinhood or PayPal to buy and sell cryptocurrencies and NFTs. So it's super private. Uh, I don't know what happens. You lose that digital key, you're fucked. But uh, you know, it, 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 it's super private there. And I guess that means I don't know. You're less susceptible to hacking. I have no idea how that works. Uh, they're partnering with block, blockchain startup Immutable X to create their marketplace. Like I said, they have this hundred million dollar fund they're doing on top of whatever other investment they're doing. So, um, so they're blowing already hundred million on that. So who knows what the total they're blowing? But again, this money is not going to be. It's not going to get recouped. I I, I'll, I will stake. I will. Oh bet yeah, on no. It. This money's not getting recouped. <laughs> Absolutely not. This is blown money. And, and blown money. And uh, what's a, how many zeros is that? Not nine digits of blown money. N nine digits. Eight. Jeez. Eight digits. Eight nines a billion. Eight digits of blown money. Is it eight zeros? No, nine digits is still millions. Oh, uh, so hundred million. Yeah, okay. nine hundred ninety-nine million nine hundred ninety-nine. Right. Nine 000. digits of blown money. There you go. Um, instead of dollars, the fund will pay artists in Immutable's own cryptocurrency. There you go. You're going to help pump a crypto, too, while you're at it, GameStop. You're going to help pump the fucking crypto on top of it, which has declined significantly in value over the last year. Like every, So now, Ian, okay, let, this, is, this is what's so great about crypto. What's so great about crypto is that um, I don't think anyone's even trying to say it's a currency anymore because you can't have a currency that wildly that's that volatile that, that one day is worth uh, fifty percent more or less than the day before. It's not a currency. It seems anymore. like every fucking uh, attempt at making it stable or a stable coin is uh, a mess. So this this uh, in the past this uh, what is this called uh, IMX that they're going to base this whole economy on? Uh, it's dropped from. End of March, it was at two fifty. Now it's struggling to reach a dollar. So that's a drop, uh, Pat Math of like what is that? Two thirds. It went down like sixty to seventy percent. 
something like like that. Jesus, uh, that's that's nuts. And this is this is the sort of thing that you're going to base uh, over a hundred million dollar investment on. Is like this is this is the underpinning of that. Are there any adults in the room? Is there no. anyone? Is no. there anyone a Chewy CEO that can say, "Listen, this is not a good idea, but it's too late. Uh, it's too late." Um, you you want to talk about the, the uh, this other NFT? News? Yeah, holy shit! So the, it's also from Video Games Chronicle, and it's hilarious com. because as you scroll through this article that I'm about to mention, there's literally a link to another article being like NFT sales have declined 92 percent since their peak. Oh, on this new article? Yeah, on this new article. Gotcha. So uh, Mega Man's Kaiji Inafune is back with Beastroid, a range of NFTs. So Kaiji Inafune. Uh, is not the sole person on Mega Man, which a lot of people, I think, mistakenly assume. He was assumed. part of the team but, earlier on. Yes, but he really pushed himself. Like, when he did Mighty Number no. 9, he, they, I mean, for 20 years, he was, like, the sole producer, but he really pushed, like, the idea that he was the only guy. So people had faith in in Mighty Number no. 9. In, in, a, in a project that went horribly bad. Yeah, in a, a, a project that went awful, 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 awful. Um, and anyway, so, he's, so he put out Pro- Mighty Number no. 9, horrible reviews um now he's kind of co-opting the mega man style and look again with beastroid um these uh nfts are <laughs> images like- of weird creatures with names like uh, uh hippo launcher frill dragon hyena slasher uh, these sound like mavericks from mega man x that's what the names are and that's essentially what these are they're essentially mega man x mavericks and they're going to be um nfts uh, i don't trust or want to touch or even really uh be associated with anything this guy is doing i, I feel like it's scammy uh, I feel like after Mighty Number no. Nine, you know, he left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, um, and I mean, I think it's actually kind of perfect that he's doing NFTs. Uh, again, this is happening so late in the NFT game that I don't think this is going to be very popular. Mm-hmm. Although I do wonder if NFTs are having a slightly different time frame in Japan, because in the past couple of months, we've really started to hear about all these um, like Japanese companies and, and people getting on board. Like Square wants to be all fucking in on NFTs. So I don't know if you know the peak of interest hit later in Japan than it did here, or if it's really just a whole bunch of people trying to get into something that's that's already passed I'm not get not in certain. early I'm not certain um so so obviously this was not this news was not met with with positive uh no this feedback. is a great tweet so this is from uh mr feel who actually i enjoy following this person for mr. their takes. Feel? mr feels wild ride i i enjoy their takes okay um what they but say? this is this is harsh this is the one you linked it's pretty fucked up that inafune sank every mega man project at capcom for years nearly drove the company into the ground left and then immediately tried to sell himself as uh, reviving mega man with the dirt from the backwoods burial still on his shoes yikes Woo! that yikes! is oh that is fucking razor sharp um, <laughs> and that was in response to uh, a tweet that says I still think it's immensely funny that mighty mighty number nine and I, I brought this up a little bit mighty number nine entirely banked on people believing Inafune was the sole creator of Mega Man uh, yeah so I, I uh, our pal Norm did a video about the basically what happened with Mega Man universe came out in the fall of the video I had no idea I, I didn't know first of all I didn't know Norm that you did this video you gotta tell me when these videos come out buddy it was a great video um, he he mismanaged that project into the fucking ground and it should have been so easy a um, fucking build your own Mega Man I mean should have been a, a license to print money and yeah the the the, the, uh, the 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 art style was terrible it looked like a flash game art yeah. it wasn't sprite based nope um, and they could have capitalized because that was years still before uh, Mario Maker so they came out with something decently competent it would have been a huge seller it would have been a success. Was that before Mario Maker? This was that was announced like eleven or twelve. That was a oh yeah, long no, you're right. Yeah, ago. God, time. We're talking like pre Wii U or sure, that, sure, yeah, um, or, or around the launch. So, so that so that got it. fucked. Then he leaves the company. That got canceled. Mega Man Legends three got canceled. They're going to do another Mega Man Legends, and they were I think they're going to do another regular side scrolling Mega Man. All the Mega Man properties got blown up partially because of Inafune. All, all the ones at the time 10 years ago. Remember? Remember yeah. It was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. It was like one after another. All these pro- things are getting canceled. Legends 3, yeah. out. Mega Man Universe, out. I have no idea. I mean... Yeah, the other stuff, too. They, I think they had another side-scrolling thing that they were going to do. I don't so, doubt it. Um, so so that was bad. Um, so, again, like, it really shows you where the, like, what the motivations are 
And there was one tweet that says that that Inafune is a businessman first. That's that's what I saw that. And, and, and how uh, Mighty Number no. Nine was handled, I could see that. You know, because that was just right. horribly mismanaged. You know, years late, and just uh, was not to people's expectations at all. That game when it came out. No, but I mean, obviously, like you like you said, a businessman first because it was a very cynical cash grab yes. attempt to be like, look at me, I'm Mr. Mega Man after destroying Mega Man. Yeah. Um, so that's unfortunate. What's more unfortunate, you know, somebody just came out with Seth Green stolen apes, and this is this is um, Schadenfreude. But um, so Seth Eights, Seth, Seth Green got fish and had a lot of NF, NFTs stolen. One 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 was the Bored Ape, one of the most famous NFTs. It was supposed to be the star of a new show that they actually made a trailer for or were going to produce. And now, technically, since he doesn't own that NFT anymore, he has no rights. To do the show because he doesn't have the copyright to that ape anymore. You uh, can't make this shit up. You can't make it up. It's trending. It, it's like the funniest thing I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, it, it's incredible. Seth Green's Seth. This is this is the main tweet. Seth Green's board ape NFT, which was set to star in its own animated show, was stolen through a phishing scam. Green no longer owns the commercial rights to the NFT, and thus the show cannot move forward. So the board ape is one of those few ones where you, you get the copyright. Fucking insane. So that's one where you get the copyright to that ape. That isn't that nuts. So uh, another person I follow on, on Twitter that and, I, and so, I, I very like, very important, says, "I can't explain what the difference is, but the story about Seth Green getting his ape stolen is just boring to me now. I'm post ape. Need something new to feel entertained by. This shot in front is worn completely off. Because I mean, I am kind of at that point. Like it was great, but it's the same thing with the Amico for me." After a while, it's like, can this just fucking end? But it's please? not going to. No. I Every don't. single day, there's a scam or a grift with NFTs that makes it like you you can't believe there's that many marks in the world that are still into this. But I know. there are. You're you're labeling yourself a mark for people to come steal your money to steal your apes or like like that. It's it's I people are licking their chops. You have all these like. Uh, like not even probably high level hackers that are now like potentially millionaires from people like people like this that are just like it's free money yeah. it's insane it, it, it's like its own ecosystem now in a way new nft project comes it's either a rug pulled by the creator or there's a scam that happens or someone gets their stuff stolen or or the, the marketplace shuts down because someone hacks it or does a flash loan and gains all the other nfts and it's like this and people are putting real money into these things uh, another plug for uh, Web3 is great on Twitter, uh, a great account if you want to see just how bad and fucked up this is every single day. There's so, something. So now you have Seth Green uh, publicly pleading. For, so the person that did the phishing one then sold it to someone else. Seth Green's now pleading for the person that bought it to give it back to them. Because there's no, there's no legal recourse. Because nope. it's not regulated. But that's what everyone wanted. So eat shit. You're, you're, you reap what you sow. And now GameStop, is, going back to GameStop, they're now getting in on this action. It's almost like a regulation is like there's uses for them. Yeah, there's, there's uses for so it. many fucking people, babies. You can't tell me what to do. Fucking live in society, asshole. Imagine if someone robbed the bank where your where your money was held, and like your money was just gone forever. Yeah. Thankfully, there's 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 things in place where you get your money back. When things like that happen, yeah. I want to be like the Wild West, bang bang. <laughs> the Wild West. I can't believe it. So he shit heels. Real quick before we end, Seth Green, who Frank literally ran into at Comic Con, almost knocked him over. It's a funny story. He told me one time. Um, uh, released the the trailer to this animated show after it was stolen, and like that. You imagine if you're in the production of the show, you're working on the show, you're in the production company, and you're like. What, wait, wait, what, what happened? We can't do the show anymore. We put all this time on it because you got fished and now it's gone. Like that's, that was the basis for your show, Seth. And Seth, you did this to increase the value of your NFT, obviously. Right. And to increase the value of the other uh, board owners. It's a fucking grift. Yep. Seth. I'm not saying I, I had a huge amount of respect for Seth before. He did fine work, voice acting and things uh, like there's that. There's things I've liked uh, that he's done, but, but this, like, is this is definitely awful. stupid. This is awful. It's dumb. It's awful. Dumb as shit.